Hey folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to some more Let's Play of Democracy 4 as Canada. This is a continuation of the run that we started in the sponsored video. Part 1 was a sponsored video. Uh, this video here, part 2, is not sponsored. The rest of the run will not be sponsored, but I do like to remind people of that. Sorry there was a gap of a couple of days here between episodes, actually probably more like three days at this point. Um, I went into a crazy busy period at home, which prevented me from being able to do any recordings whatsoever, which was... Um, really unfortunate, but I definitely want to finish this run here. We're still very early on in a run as Canada here. We don't have any particular theme we're specifically pushing for, although I'm getting a bit of a let's do some like environmentally conscious business earring kind of vibe, maybe? Maybe that can be our thing. Almost playing a little bit like the, uh, the Green Party in Canada. The Green Party in Canada, very, very minor party in terms of actual seats they get in an election, uh, but business-minded, but eco-friendly, I guess might be the best way to describe their kind of vibe. So maybe that's the sort of thing we're going for over here. I don't know. Still looking to deal with some of the uh, the larger outstanding problems wherever we can. We do have this problem with pollution over here, which would be nice to resolve. Uh, we have environmental protests. Again, we could just, you know, prevent, we could ban protests, but we could also just improve the environment. Wouldn't that be bad? Uh, currently, we do have an uncompetitive economy over here. Uh, basically, you know, it costs too much to produce our goods on the world market or we don't get enough of it. So there's a few different ways to improve this. Uh, education, technology, improve productivity, those are great ways. Or we could go full capitalist and just, you know, remove corporate taxes, for example. And all of a sudden, we'd have a much more competitive economy. And the other problems we have over here is obesity, which is still pretty high, and respiratory disease, which is pinned to the max over here. But if we can go ahead and improve the environment, um, then uh, this will go down over time, and that would be quite good, make the parents quite happy. So right now, our again, our biggest demographic groups, motorists, liberals, capitalists, those are our big ones over here, um, and it would be great to keep those guys happy. Um, environmentalists, of, of the large groups that are cranky with us, middle income are the crankiest of the bigger groups, with environmentalists being close behind over here. Middle income's kind of tricky to deal with, I've found in the past. They really hate income tax, that's their big thing over here. Um, but income tax is the biggest source of money for our country. So it would be great if we could cut the income tax a little bit at some point. That would do huge things for our vote. Uh, maybe we can do that somewhat closer to the election time. Um, because right now we are still running a deficit and that is quite poor. Okay, I, the earlier we do the cabinet reshuffle, the better things will be because we will get more political power. I'm wondering if now might be the time to do it. Just a big cabinet reshuffle. Oh. I'm used to clicking on this button over here because this is where the cabinet button, I believe used to be in previous versions, I'm not sure, but over here. Um, probably the thing to do is a full reshuffle here. Some of them, especially the ones that aren't particularly loyal, don't cost very much to fire, uh, but usually I find it's better to do this and just get a free pick. So let's, let's go ahead and, uh, oh! No, let's, yeah, let's kick everyone out and do a full reshuffle. That's new in four, is the ability to pick individual ones to do over there. So let's get a higher end. Um, so foreign policy is the first category we're gonna be picking over here. Uh, and so depending on the combination of loyalty experience that uh, someone has, they will give you more points over in total. Um, loyalty, experience, and... No, yeah, loyalty and experience. Whereas campaigning does help us get better, well, better election results. So if we sort by experience over here, no one actually has a ton of experience in that. So maybe I will sort my loyalty. So we can set 2.2s. Ideally, you want someone with the foreign policy pick because that is what their preferred job is. I believe it will work to keep them happy. Uh, who's this fellow? Olivier White. He has great loyalty, good campaigning as well. And the capitalists do like him. Um, which is going to help us, but also we need to keep the capitalists and the parents happy to keep him happy. He really lacks experience, but at least that will grow over time. Maybe this is going to be a good pick for foreign policy. He doesn't know much now, but you know, he toes the party line, and apparently what we want is a bunch of sycophants, I suppose. I guess none of our, um, I'm just looking down the experience list over here. No one seems to have a lot of experience in any particular category, so I think mostly we'll be centering things around loyalty. This fellow over here, Ryan Baker, would give us the most points, but he doesn't actually want a welfare job. Most likely what we want to do is put him in one of these other categories, public services, tax, or the economy, because he might do even better there uh, in theory. In fact, we can go and take a look at that. Uh, if we go over to public services, 
Okay, we got that selected. And okay, he's still just a 2.2, but he will be happier in this role. So that seems like a good idea. Let's swing back over to welfare minister. So we got a couple of 2.1s. They're both interested in this, which is good. Um, they both have foreign policy, which have and law and order. Uh, so foreign policy has already been assigned and one of these two might go into law and order. You do want to check that in case you've like backed yourself in the corner where you're not left with anything particularly useful. So really what we'd be looking for is hire one of these two here and then hire one of these two probably in law and order. So we'll go ahead and grab that Mia Poirier over here and then we'll go to law and order boom boom and check 2.1 still the highest over here all right that seems like a good pick done and we know that he doesn't have any other preferences for any other job so if he's good we want to hire him in something that'll work Ooh, this is a little bit awkward our best person for economy would be sophie lewis at a 2.0 but she's not particularly keen on this job we're down to jack cote over here um, let's let's look at another category. We're gonna try to make people as satisfied as possible. So we'd be losing one tick over here with 1.9. We don't have anyone in transport yet. I suspect, yeah, we're just gonna stick her in transport and at least make her happy. And for taxes, we got a 1.9, which is the best available, and he'll be happy over there. And then finally for economy, that leaves us, we only got 1.7s at this point. We may as well put Jack Cote in here because at least he'll be pleased. So we'll do that. We are now going to get more points per per quarter uh we did spend 10 over here in th the payback period's not gonna be brilliant unfortunately because we didn't actually increase things by that much but it will help so i guess we're getting an extra four per turn so the payback will be in two and a half quarters but we also can store more as a maximum so uh, we're definitely gonna we're gonna definitely gonna get value over here and hopefully what we did is we did put people in positions they were very happy with their loyalty is very good as their experience grows in those positions which hopefully we don't want to do another shuffle probably should have done it on for turn one um hopefully we'll get more points and more ability to manipulate things okay so we only have six points which isn't a lot Rather than look at the sliders that we might want to change over here, because a lot of the sliders we could potentially change probably aren't going to be... Um, like, we don't actually have a lot of range for a lot of these policies here. The, the little color coding on top tells you how much you can play with. So if we look at areas like this, this is why I clicked on this, where it was purely green, we do have a lot of room to play with. Um, but overall, we might want to hold off. Oh, community policing is interesting. Cranking this up does make the liberals happier because the idea is it's just the people who live in an area that look after things as opposed to the, the government um it doesn't do much overall it's not very expensive working with the community rather than attempting to control it right okay and that helps with racial tension as well it helps to reduce racial tension because because it's it's less about having members of the community do the policing, which I think would be like vigilanteism, uh, but more about, you know, community programs and things like that, rather than just throw police at the problem. You know what? I think we will go do this. A lot of these things take a while to kick in. Uh, I think it's the sort of thing we're going to want maxed out at some point, no matter what. It's not a tremendous change, I suppose, for our six. We, I think it is something we'd like to do. The other thing we could look at is a new policy. Now, most of them are going to be uh, blanked out. Um, food stamp search, they can cost a lot, but they can be very powerful. Uh, this is definitely a good idea over here. It's cheap. It's a good idea. Maybe? I mean, we're going to want to do it at some point. It's always a question of priorities. Right. Uh, business startup campaign mostly makes people self-employed. It does make the capitalists happy. We do have a lot of capitalists. That is true. City Farms is interesting. Cheapest chips to run. Helps to lower food prices, which then has a knock-on effect on poverty. Makes farmers happy and makes more farmers as well. Should I just run this? I mean, this just seems like a pure win-win. Both politically and economically. And yeah, we'll, we'll crank this up. There's no reason not to. We want to bring food prices down. The me farmer's membership is going to take a long time before it starts to have an effect at all. And then, you know, even with a with a boost to the farmer's membership percentage per round, it'll still take a while for the actual number of farmers to change up. But I think this is okay. You know, let's run this. We have three points left, which is basically nothing. We'll just save that up for the next turn. But we've made a couple of good changes in this first quarter. I think that's going to be okay. Oh, right. There was a situation imminent. Wasn't there last turn as well? Oh, shoot. I don't remember. 
Okay, what is this? Support democracy protesters. Street protests are taking place in foreign country with historical ties to us. We do a lot of profitable trade with this country, but their government is authoritarian, and we face pressure to openly support the cause of the street protesters. Uh, do we believe in democracy or not? This should not be complicated. If the government is showing authoritarian tendencies, and we believe the protesters have a point, then we should stand by our principles and back them, and not keep quiet because it earns us money and trade deals to look the other way. Or we would be angered if we face protesters in our streets, as all democracies do, and foreign leaders started openly backing the protesters against our government. It would be terrible for our diplomatic relations with this trading partner if we took the side of a relatively small number of protesters in the streets. This is an interesting and difficult question because, you know, real politics are real politics, right? Uh, we would, you know, even if we're role playing here, as a you know very very democratic and open and liberal kind of uh, society over here there is the still the real question of well if it's going to cost our country a lot of money and that will make it you know harder for us to do things to improve our citizens lives that is a very real question to deal with but i think we're going to go with support the protesters anyway and see what that does liberals are going to be very happy with us uh foreign relations and international trades are impacted negatively though which is a little bit unfortunate oh i didn't mean to click on that education over here health is definitely dropping it used to be in the green now it's in the orange unemployment is still higher than i'd like but at least it's no longer orange and what's the situation imminent oh yes water shortage now luckily the start and stop triggers are fairly close to one another um so even if it started it wouldn't be that much harder to get rid of it but Water, state water companies, what plant-based diet helped to bring that down. And the reason this is, is because um, it takes a lot less water to grow the plant fields for us to eat directly, rather than then take all that plant, feed it to the cows, and then do that. So plant-based diets reduce water impact overall. Um, looks like having more farmers will increase the amount of water shortage. I guess that kind of makes sense. And then the temperature balance as well. I wonder if there's any other policies we could run to affect water shortage. Mostly it seems like if we could encourage people to do plant-based diets, um, that would be good overall. And you know what? This healthy eating campaign, it only costs one to increase it. It doesn't have a big impact overall, but it has a small boost on health, a small decrease of obesity, a small increase of plant-based diets. It's all good overall, costs us a single political power to make this change, and costs us basically no money. So we'll go ahead and apply that. That's going to be okay. Um, click here. So more, if we have more environmentalists, more people will have plant-based diets, which is good overall. Food standards industry is already maxed out. Um, compulsory food labeling. This is actually a good idea. Again, costs us nothing doesn't piss off anyone. I mean, the capitalists are slightly unhappy that they have to explicitly list all the food that goes into the food, but barely. And it slightly hurts the GDP, just again, because of, well, it'd be great if businesses could just do whatever they want and they could make tons of extra money. Uh, but overall, we'd probably lose money as everyone got sick. So boost plant-based diets with the extra labeling, helps to decrease obesity, helps to increase health. Overall, this seems like an excellent idea. It's not that expensive in terms of political capital, and it's super cheap over here. So we're going to go ahead and go with extra food labeling, maybe closer in line to what the EU does. I really like the EU labels, the way that it's split between sort of like portion, but also like a standard, what, like 100 gram reference, which makes it very, very useful for things. Just really handy dandy. Um, okay. So now we've got this over here. We still have 14 political power left, which is certainly enough to make a few decisions here and there. Uh, how's the pollution situation? It's gone up dramatically. So we started reforesting over here and the pollution just shot up some more. Most likely there was some other change in our overall economy. You can see the first of all, the reforesting hasn't really kicked in all the way yet. It's only halfway, maybe a little past halfway the, the impact here. Um, probably it's something like our GDP grew or something like that. What is the deal with this grid? This, oh. How come they don't all have that? That's interesting. So car usage looks like it's going up and influenced by electric car transition. Oh, maybe this is the view for the transition to electric cars. That's probably the case. Oh, that's an interesting extra breakdown that never used to exist. Okay. Um, I would like to improve the competitiveness of our economy. Uh, one thing we could do is, yeah, see, this is, this is very... One thing that would be great to do is crank the shit out of the secularity of our education. Um, it really upsets the religious, but also reduces religious membership. Uh, so over time, 
that that becomes less of a problem. It does take a long time to take effect. And meanwhile, you might get assassinated by them, which could be bad. Mostly it makes the liberals and liberalisms happy, but apparently, did this not have, it doesn't show it over here. I thought this was linked to, to our technological situation. Productivity, technology, science fund, I guess not. Okay. I would like to boost technology situation. We don't have much in the way of money. Like we're really looking for policies here that can improve our situation without spending too much money. Um, so that'll have to be more strategic kind of policies wherever we can do it. Uh, maybe a few more over here. Again, health, if we improve our health, things get better overall as well. Um, that can be very expensive. Consumer rights is cheap as hell. Hurts the GP self and pisses off the self-employed and capitalist. Makes the liberals happier. More investor tax breaks. I don't think that's what we want. Helicopter money. Liberty bank holiday. Trade unionists are really happy by that. Um, robotics. So that helps the technology and industrial automation. Industrial automation, I believe, does improve our uh, economic competitiveness, but I believe hurts unemployment. Like it makes unemployment worse because people will lose some jobs. And we do have high unemployment right now. Rural development grants. I mean, it's not free. And it does increase car usage, which we don't really want, but otherwise it's in pretty good shape. Trade Council. Okay, hold on. We should run this. Because we actually just took a hit in international trade and foreign relations. This doesn't cost much. I bet you it has a, a very long time to apply. But if we implement this, it's it's a fairly small effect. Actually, it's not the longest time. But boosting international trade, and foreign relations is also folds back into international trade, should lead to more international business, better sales overall. Um, it, That would be up in this category over here, wouldn't it? Let's transport fort policy. It, things have moved slightly from previous versions of the game. Um, so international trade. So it's actually quite high. But the better, the better. I think it does increase CO2 emissions and air travel and all those things, which then has more and more impact on pollution. But what else we got here? Prison regime. Harsh, gentle. Gentle costs more money because we're running more, like, program for things doesn't make us look more compassionate um oh i see oh that's quite interesting so this is impacting crime twice and like wait what so if we go harsh what it's going to do it's going to lower crime and that's going to be immediately because of the zero but over time crime will increase because the opposite, if we go gentle, which is going to be focusing on rehabilitation programs, um, short term, if we go gentle, it's actually going to... Um, so right now, crime is being lowered by a certain amount. This is going to lower crime by less in the short term because people aren't going to be as scared of the prison sentences. But over time, it will dramatically lower crime. Uh, well dramatically ish it's not that big of a meter but it, over time it will lower crime more because the idea is people will get out of prison but will be will have job education so they'll enter the workforce and not uh repeat their crimes so it's short term versus long term makes us more compassionate which is going to be better for education for um election um it upsets the conservatives but we don't have very many conservatives we do have a lot of liberals this is actually very good for a re-election re Increases education, increases liberalism membership, while at the same time making liberals happier. It's going to cost us a lot of political capital. If this is a really good thing for us to do to get reelected, and overall will help the country with lower crime and better education. I just don't know if it's our priority. CCTV cameras, liberals don't like that. Gender transition support. What's the difference here? It costs nothing. Because it turns out not that many people are actually looking for it. Boost liberalism membership makes liberalism happy. Does increase some healthcare demand because of the surgery. And upsets conservatives and religious. Okay, that's gonna be an interesting one to keep in our back pocket. Legal aid. Okay, this this doesn't represent a huge cost increase, 
makes liberals poor, socialists happy, increased equality, improves poor earnings. That's not terrible. None of these are dealing with our immediate problems. These are things I want to do. But the question is, what do I need to do right now? I'd still like to reduce the amount of people who are smokers in our country. Also, this uncompetitive economy sucks. They can't afford the education. I don't like it when you can't make a change all the way. Oh, it gets quite expensive. And it does boost pollution a lot. Damn. Guys, I don't know. Maybe I'll just look for a new policy. Workers on boards. Right. Ban crypto! That's very topical right now. This doesn't do much. Mostly it makes the environmentalists happy and upsets the capitalists. But in, even in real life, it's like um, the plastic bag tax or or the, the thing where like, oh, grocery stores now charge you five cents for a grocery bag. Oh, it's to lower consumption of, of plastic bags. Except that's not what happens. People use just as money. The, the grocery stores bank the extra cash and they justify it often by using thicker plastic bags because they're reusable, except people don't. And so it just uses up more plastic. Like this, this whole thing is... It's not, doesn't make me as happy as it, as it could be in real life. Like, I'm not convinced that it has the effect that we want, which is very disappointing. Now, this plastic tax is interesting. Hurts GDP, and everyone's income goes down. Lowers oil demand, and does directly boost the environment. But it's not super cheap. Like, the popularity of voters is 100%, because it's only affecting one voter group, the environmentalists. I think we're going to want to run it, but I don't know about now. Now, the CO2 campaign is interesting. It really doesn't cost much money at all. It increases plant-based diets, increases the environment, makes more, excuse me, makes more environmentalists, drops CO2 emission, drops car usage. This is, I mean, this is wonderful. I mean, it's just a cheap ad campaign. Now, how much of an impact it, ha impact it has, I don't know. But yeah, we're going to run this and we're going to run it maxed out. I think this is going to be really good for us. You know, we're not, we're not changing laws or anything like that. We're just encouraging people to do the right thing somewhere along the way. The bike subsidies might be fun too. They're again, not terribly expensive, increases health, increases uh, environmentalist income. I wonder why. I guess because they're happy to use the bike and then as long as we supply bike lanes and everything for them, they don't have to worry about maintaining a car and stuff. I don't know. Decreases obesity, which is good. Uh, decreases usage of various other transits, which then increase pollution. You know what, let's do bicycle subsidies, which are honestly completely impractical in Canada outside of the large cities. On the other hand, the large cities do represent a fairly significant per, uh, percentage of our population. So I guess we'll do that. And then we're out of points. Let's advance one more month and see what happens here. How's the threat situation looking? Okay, I mean, we have no, no one radicalized yet, so at least that's something. We didn't do anything to improve the water situation, although it seems mostly static. Health continuing to drop, GDP is dropping as well. Um, what's the, uh, what's the world? Yeah, appointment, ports, trustworthy, economic forecast, doing well. Okay. Sticking up for the environment. Environmental protesters breached an airport security and glued themselves to an aeroplane. Excellent picture. Flight has been prevented from taking off. There's widespread disruption at Capitol's airport. Middle income goes down. Environmentalist membership goes up. A uh, major donor uh, abandons the party. Oh shit, we are not looking like a strong leader all of a sudden. Well, that's not good. Uh, media monopoly situation might start soon. We may have to boost our um, our state broadcaster a wee bit. Interesting. Press freedom. It's currently bringing this down. I wonder if more press freedom contributes to bring that lower. Or if we just say, yeah, the media companies can do whatever they want, then they can build the monopolies better. You know what I mean? There's a couple of different ways to read this. I'm assuming that we, we do have press freedom quite high, and right now it's contributing to a big drop over here. I'm assuming the way they're interpreting this is that high press freedom uh, makes it easier to compete against the media monopoly. Maybe, you know, people can do more blogging and YouTubing and things like that. Uh, we allow more, like, third-party people or, you know, small media representatives to come into press... Me press 
press briefings, press briefings, that sort of thing. So maybe that, and probably, yeah, better internet speeds also help bring that down. Okay. It doesn't look like it's growing. It's close. And it's, I love that these warnings are here, but okay. All right. Health dropping. That's not good. We have a lot of points. What was I going to do with this? Was I going to consider running a new policy where I needed 19 points to make the change? Yeah. I'd already forgotten what it was. Dang it. Let's take a quick little gander over here. Respiratory disease is still maxed out. Obesity actually has gone up. Environmental protests have gotten worse. Ugh. Uncompetitive economy got worse. And our pollution went down a tick, but it really had nowhere to go but down, I suppose. Reforestation is still underway. I wonder if there's something else I can run here. Wow, the envi is my environment like 0%? Well, that's really poor. Now, the biggest contributor to that is our GDP, which is really good. We're making lots of money, so people are spending it for terrible things. I don't want to, you know, tank the economy to improve this. Can we... Okay, we could boost pollution controls. Now, that will lower the GDP, but I guess our GDP is pretty high right now. And lowering the GDP then has a knock-on effect on further decreasing pollution. This, improve, this makes environmentalists happy, makes capitalists unhappy, does substantially boost the environment, though it takes a while to go, does curb CO2 emissions, though it does take a while to go. I think we're going to go with, like, major fines for pollution controls. I think we're going to do that. Wow, it's not it's very little political capital make these changes. Okay. I guess they're pretty popular overall. Hmm. I mean, if I'm worried about money... Our deficit has shrunk a little bit, which is good. I could, I could cut some military spending... Now, high military spending actually does boost technology. So we're currently spending six billion. We could drop it by a billion, perhaps. Well, I tell you what, I'll drop it by as much as I can without the cost going up. You know, where does it show me the actual cost of implementing this change? Oh, there, on the in little tooltip, there. So bring it here. So we're just going to spend six political capital, bring it down this much over here. Let me go ahead and apply these changes. Now, this can lead to a bunch of problems. But what we're trying to do is save a little bit of money. All right, man, this is probably going to backfire on us in a big way, but we'll see what that's like next time. Folks, thanks a lot for watching another episode. Again, sorry for the delay between episodes, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.